Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today is a very cold day outside, so before I go for my daily walk in the neighbor, this is what I love to do every time that I have a break from school, I'm going to do a small practice uh, for my YouTube channel and for all of you, my friends. So winter, I know that is a tough season for many. Many people struggle with seasonal uh, depression. I am lucky that I don't struggle with that. At the beginning, like the adjustment to Utah winters was really like different from other experiences that I had before has been a little challenge for me but I always say that I'm so grateful that I am artistic that I work on my creativity that I'm an art teacher and an artist and I can really um, really get a inspired by the season, even the challenge that comes with the season, and turn it into something. So today I'm going to do a practice that is not going to take longer than 30 minutes in total, so the practice itself is more or less 20, and we're going to use watercolor because I say sometimes when we want to let go, watercolor is the perfect media. Although I we did other practice with me with watercolors, and we know that we can use the more or less water, so if you want something like really let the water do its magic, we will have something very blended and very watery. Today we're going to do something in between, so we're going to have a little control using not too much water, mostly if you're working on a, a mixed media paper. I have a called watercolor paper, so if you have a watercolor paper, I highly encourage you to use a watercolor paper. If you don't have it and you have a thick, robust mixed media paper, just do you. You will use a little less water and you will have a little more control of it, but it's going to look gorgeous. And remember, today, as I say, I want it to be also sort of a mindful practice. And remember that when we do mindful practice, the focus is never on the products, but on the process. So I'm using, a, since I have a little leftover watercolor paper, it's like four inches by 12. You can use something similar than mine or something completely different. So for today, today's practice, you need the watercolor paper or mixed and media paper. A long shape, like a long rectangle or any size and shape that you feel comfortable with. If you want something bigger, maybe you will finish the practice after I finish the video. Or you can watch the video and then you can do the practice on your own, adapting the practice to your own uh, media, the supplies that you have available, and also what is your personality and what you would like to do. I have a pencil for drawing. If you are a beginner and intermediate, follow me step by step and use the pencil. If you are an advanced artist and you just want to have some fun together, you can skip the pencil step. Then I have like a brushes for watercolor. You can have just one. If you have multiple, I would say medium, small, and a very small for today's practice because it's pretty tiny, it's perfect. And if you happen to have just one medium brush, just when you have to go in smaller detail, add the less pressure. So barely touch the paper, okay? Then, of course, I will have my watercolors, and you can have a different palette than mine. If you have a smaller palette when you just have a couple of green, remember when we did the exercise about the color wheel and the colors, you mix it. You can mix the yellow with the green and having a bright, like, intense light lime green. You can mix some blue with the green and have a darker, more turquoise type of green. You can mix the two greens that you have available in your palette. You can mix a little bit of orange with the green to have some brownish. So you can have fun. Actually, you know, I encourage you to experiment and see what happens, right? You can use the same palette that I have. You can use different color. Once again, you need to have your personality, your personal touch, and your personal twist. At the end, I'm going to use like a gel pen and some Posca markers. If you do not have gel pen or Posca markers with you, you can actually add details with um, regular markers. Of course, not the like a white marker, one work of watercolor, but you can use brown, dark brown, blue, purple, black. You can really be creative and add some details on top, some pattern and texture. So I'm going to switch the camera and we can start. And I hope that you're ready to have some fun and just focus on something beautiful, nice, slow pace, go with the flow you know, inspired by the nature, by the winter, by forest and trees, but still something that you can enjoy at home in a cozy environment, hopefully for you.
Okay, friends, here we are. This is my 4 by 12 pieces of paper. As I say, you can do something even smaller. You can do something with a regular size. So you do what you have and what you want to do. Now, if you're very advanced, you can skip this passage. However, I will do the first passage with a pencil. So we're going to do like some organic shape. Pretend that you're drawing, let's say, cotton balls or clouds. And we start from the left and we cover all the length of the paper. So very like uh, randomly, you just do this organic shape. Don't do them all the same. Create some variety in the height, right? Some shape can be more regular. Some shape can be bigger. Some shape can be smaller. You can do the same shape over and over, of course, and off you go. Now, this is the first line. We're going to kind of a cover, create a second line, create a part of the same shape, so just like a, a different behind the first uh, row. To feel basically the space. And I think that we are all ready. Now let's start to use our watercolor. Remember that we have to uh, put the brush inside the water and then pick the color that we want, the green that you want to use first. And as I say, I have many greens available and I will play around with different ones, different tones. But if you don't have many green available, you can actually do, you can mix uh, the green together, the two greens together, usually in the limited watercolor palette, you have at least a light green and a dark green. You can use first the light a few times, then the dark a few times, then mix them both a few times, and then you can mix some yellow with the green, and then you can mix some blue. So you will give yourself many different tons of green, and it's going to be fun. As you can see, I'm using enough water because I want to see the water do its magic, and then I blend it like that. And it's beautiful that you give the value, so darker and lighter spot automatically. Then you can keep doing the same green, and maybe this is what I like to do. Since my brush is already spoiled with the same green, I will paint a few trees with the same green before rinsing my brush. I think it's very like a functional, right? And uh, I don't have to, sometimes I will pick just a little bit of water without picking the colors again. And then I will just go and finish and basically carry the beautiful things about watercolor that you carry them around. So beautiful. And very relaxing, honestly. The watercolor is perfect for relaxation and mindful practice because, you know, it's, it's nature itself. So the fact that you have to mix it with water and so you control it, but you control it all the way. You cannot control it all the way. And there is always that element of surprise at the end, right? That's, it's such a beautiful feeling and I personally love it. Every time that you feel that your brush is getting too dry, you pick again, just the water. Now I'm gonna go and switch it to a darker green. So I'm gonna make my green. Sometimes you have to go water and palette, the water and palette several times until you have that consistency, that uh, creamy watercolor that you really wanna use. Mm, nice, more on the olive green and you can do this practice with some music in the background or you can do it like a quietly just a little dark nice here And then we keep going. I'm gonna use the same green again over and over. Now, if you miss the fall, 
<laughs> or you live in an environment that features different type of green, I really highly encourage you to choose another palette. I'm just doing green because this is what, you know, if when I go do some hiking in the mountains, well, right now we have some snow, of course. This winter we're not having as much as we did last winter. So the color palette is a little more... Uh, various and vibrant last year was mainly white and gray from october to april so this year it's like we have a little more variety but as i was you know if you want to do your like more fall or whatever like uh, are the colors that inspired you and surround you go for it if you want to do something whimsical a fairy forest and you want to have your purple and pink tree Go for it. And we keep exploring other green. And now I'm going to mix some blue actually with the dark green to have a sort of a dark turquoise and see what happened. Teal, one of my favorite colors because I love it. At the same time, it's very intense and really evoke different feelings, sometimes a little not discomfort, but agitation, which is a feeling, and feelings are feelings, so we have to feel them all. A little bit of just water, so I can play with what I have already, and carry it around. A little bit of water. There we go. It's beautiful natural value that goes from the very fairy tale. I love it. So we're gonna call it fairy tale green. And let's keep it going. Mm, I really, really dyed this dark. green and remember the watercolors unless you use too much water they usually dry very fast so if you do not like color you're allowed to try something on top of it and see what happens i really love the contrast of this very very dark green and this bright green that we use at the beginning so i'm going to put it next to each other and i think that i'm going to do this one as well just because i love this turquoise deep turquoise very much i'm going to make it dark for what concern the pressure of the brush on the paper i am really gently and delicate touching the paper this is something that i always stress with my students the fact that we should have enough water to be able to expand the colors like on the paper without scrubbing on it right we want to be gentle and delicate on the paper now i'm gonna go back and do another green i'm gonna mix a dark green with the bright medium green and let's see what happened mm -hmm. beautiful and bright a little bit of water because i want to be able to expand you see you just basically gently controlling the movement of your hands you carry the color around gently and careful around the edges if you happen that the watercolor mix actually it's even better so it's this the beauty of watercolor so no need to get frustrated or stressed about just let the water do its magic let's mix again medium light and dark and let's use it over here nice and bright 
and a little whimsical forest is coming together. And only just the, the, the feeling to see all different tones of green or whatever color you are using right now is just like a very nice, nice feeling. So I'm gonna use this one for this tree. Gonna do sort of an outline first. Carry it into the small spaces and then spread it out onto the rest. And keep it going. There you go. It'll be here. Nice. Let's experiment now with uh, another green to which I will mix a light green with some uh, dark yellow. So you can mix a yellow with the green and see what happened. Very nice and light. And I can make it lighter just instead to like it just picking up some more water without touching the color again. So we we'll just keep spreading what I first picked. Make sure that I have, yes, there you go, a little bit more value here, darkness. And then without even picking the color, I will just add some water on my brush and use the leftover color that I still have in my brush for an even lighter green. A little bit more intensity here. And the one final. I pick some color this time. So it's still bright and light, but a little more intense than the previous one. Beautiful. Now, before we work with some patterns that we want to do with the brush or with the gel pen or markers, we want to make sure that these are completely dry. So let's take care a little bit of the ground and the sky. Once again, you will do you. You don't have to copy my same, the same color that I'm about to use. You can do a beautiful sunset sky. You can do a blue sky. You can do a grayish sky. You will do you. I will personally use some blue. I want this paper to really feature a cold palette. Cold palette is really my kind of palette. So I feel very settled, very embraced and very calm when I use a cold palette. So I'm making my blue scrubbing several times but gently my brush on the uh, palette, on the blue, so water, color, water and color several times unless I have my, you know, until I have my creamy color that I want. You can even put the paper upside down if you want to and then you start to spread the color that you chose for your sky and as i say it doesn't have to be like mine it could be a sunset sky so you can have a beautiful hot pink maybe an orange you can have a i don't know a peach you can have a darker sky you can have a, a gray black a stormy sky whatever is the feeling that you would like to evoke in today's practice or what are, it's like, you know, what you want to suggest, or maybe some experiment that you want to do, right? Just remember the trick with the watercolor that depending on the practice, so depending on the project that you need to paint with them, you have to really figure out the right amount of water that you need to use. Because if it's too little, the brush is going to be maybe too dry and it's not going to allow any nice blending. If it's too much, it might, mostly if you're not using a watercolor paper, it might rip the paper um, or the color might show too pale. So you really need to kind of uh, figure that out, which is also a very, very important, not only lesson, 
that comes with the practice, but also I feel that it's a, such a great opportunity, right? That is not really a one way to go, that is not really one right or wrong. You just have to find the thing that works for you, which requires taking risk, requires practice, commitment, and dedication, which is very important, not only in art, in school, but in general in life. But then it's very rewarding because once you have it figured out, there is such a beautiful, rewarding feeling that comes with that. And you will know exactly what to do in the future practice and you will get better and better in whatever is the practice that you are embracing. I'm doing a little more like a dark and intense palette near the trees and then I just put the brush inside the water and I gently, very gently, remember the secret is that the pressure has to be very gentle. I just spread the, the color all the way in the space that I have available. So pretty. A little darker here, so I add a little bit more color, and now I will just finish the rest blending this beautiful blue with water and let it like do its job on the rest of the paper, creating also a beautiful illusion of clouds, right? I want to just gently. over a little bit this there you go not too much so let's avoid to overdo it sometimes we need to really be able to stop and that's beautiful i'm gonna add a little bit of blue now that i can see if i want it a little more intense or less intense i want to add a little more intensity here so this is where i will go I want to add a little more like uh, values, darkness between the trees and right behind them because it allows the trees themselves to pop up more from the paper, from the design and it gives more interest, right, and mood. Uh, you add some mood to the piece. There we go. Now this one is all done and we are going to let it dry. And now we can work over here. And you can actually, I'm not going to clean my brush so much. I will just go with a very, very light brown that gets mixed with a little bit of blue that I still have on my brush. So let's see what happens. And I will do it very, very light. You see, I have a little bit of greenish, brownish mix with the blue. And very like randomly, I kind of follow the line of my tree, of my trees. I don't full, like I don't completely saturate the space, so I leave some area white. I add a little bit of blue in that really kind of a greenish earth tone too dark so I'm gonna just put some water randomly like that just to create this illusion I'm gonna have some blue now just blue you see how it changed because my it's, my brush is still kind of spoiled by the the brownish the greenish a little bit of everything and that's it and we let them stay now if you have a very very thin brush so you can continue with the one that you have been using i'm gonna continue with this one so i can show you if you have like a piece of paper you can clean the brush a little bit more and now you can use a very dark brown or even a black or mix a brown with the black if you don't have a very very dark one 
and uh, you want to make sure that this time is not dripping water so you kind of uh, control and then we are going to do the trunks of the trees the one that we will be able to see of course Basically, they are very short, if you want to do some of them, like a bigger, longer, you do you. Very simple, you see? Very nice, though. It's like doing a small rectangles, very nice and creative. And now, if you want, you can leave your trees the way they are. You can add branches. So barely touching the paper, you need to be extremely careful. So if you feel that you are a beginner, you don't want to risk it, you can leave the trees the way they are. But you can also do these branches, maybe not everywhere, but in some of the trees. You have to barely, barely touch the paper with the tip of your brush. You have to control the amount of water, so very little water because you want to have a very thin line and you want to control, so you don't want the color to expand because you want to be able to see them. So I'm going to do a few more just to let you see again. I'm mixing a little bit of black. This time I'm using black because maybe I'm gonna do it on darker green, darker uh, trees. So I need and careful because you see I'm gonna be careful because here is still wet. So I don't want that. I'm gonna do like central side, 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 and then the smaller, shorter branches here and there. Very carefully, one. Same concept over here. You just add a little, like you know, these patterns which are not realistic, might add a little interest and might give some movement to the design. But once again, I told you before, you do not have to do them if you don't feel like you see, you can do sort of a pretending that are huge leaves. If you don't want to, if you don't feel that you don't have the skills. And you want to leave your design as it was before, just leave it as it was before, okay? Hmm, let me see, maybe on this one. So you can have some with the branches, some without the branches. If you want to add some magic, if you happen to have some Posca markers, right? We have some silver. You can add like a, well, still a little wet, but you can add gently some silver here and there, like on the tip of the tree. The design is a little wet, but I want to do it uh, with you, so I'm not gonna wait or break the video, or break the video, and then put it together. You know that I like a spontaneous uh, practices, so I do it with you, and I see what happens. Pretty, pretty. Few nice touches. You don't have to do it once again. It's really up to you. You can do over. You can go over one more thing, one more time. So the really the silver will show a little more, and we add once again some more implied texture, a little bit of fun, 
right? We can do something in the street. If you're more of a goldish, uh, we can have some really dots, few dots of gold. Let's see if it works. There you go. My little gold. Even on the trees, you can kind of go with the palette, go with the um, the pattern. My goodness, at the third, I got it. Okay, very, very nice. A few spots of gold. Bellish your trees. Look how pretty. Whenever you still you feel that it's still wet, just let it dry. Don't go over with the wet on the wet surface. I have to be careful in few corners where I can still see the watercolors drying. You see, you just do dots. They're so pretty, and they add a little bit of sparkle and magic to our design. Maybe I like the gold on the dark trees, and maybe the silver more on the lighter trees let's do some more dots i want some dots in this one there you go some dots here and there barely visible And this is our beautiful and nice whimsical forest that we created together. I'm going to turn the camera for some goodbye and uh, I hope you enjoy the practice as much as I did. Okay, friends, thank you so much for practicing with me. I really, really, really enjoyed this practice. It was such a beautiful whimsical forest, uh, 22 minutes to dedicate to yourself, uh, to refine some fine model skills, to review some technique with watercolors, and at the same time to learn because of the nature of watercolor to just let it go and let it flow and see what happened and play with different materials that you have available. Remember that if you were using regular markers because you happen not to have a, a Posca markers or whatever, just let it dry and then you can use a dark colors on top of the watercolors so they will show. Of course, a lighter color such as the white markers, unless it's an acrylic markers, it won't show anything. Once again, you do not have to copy exactly what I do. You can try something different, something more, something left less so you can try with sharpie for example if you don't feel that you have the right model skills to do the branches with a brush although i suggest you to try and if it doesn't come and if it doesn't uh, happen at the first time remember that you can rewatch the video and you can do this practice as many times as you wish and as many times as you can i wish you all a fantastic day i wish you all type of blessing and i hope that you're all safe that you're all uh, good and healthy and I see you all very soon. Ciao a tutti!